Hi everyone, and welcome to my 2025 Linux setup video. The last time I made one of these was a couple of years ago to say the least, and while my setup hasn't changed a whole lot, there are a few new programs that I want to talk about that I've added to my system. To begin with is this list over here I've compiled of them. It's being displayed with a program called Glow, which is a markdown viewer and editor. You can open up markdown files like this, and when you want to edit them, you can press E, and it will open up your editor of choice, in my case, Vim. I can go through and make any changes, and then write and quit, and it will send me back to the little glow display. You can also scroll through it and see everything. I'm going to be referencing this list throughout the video, so you can keep track of all the different programs that I use. To begin with is my operating system. Now, for the past few years, I've been only using Arch and Artix Linux. So right now, I'm actually using Arch, so if I run fast fetch over over here, which is like the new version of NeoFetch. As you can see, I have Arch Linux. Oh no, it's it's my IP address, guys. I've been doxxed. Artix is the same as Arch, but you get to choose your init system, so you don't have to use System D. And I used to use the Run It and the D init versions, which are pretty good. I recommend either of those if you want to use it. I'm using Arch right now because I encountered a few compatibility issues, but really for the most part, it's unnoticeable whether you use Artix or Arch. The next obvious thing is this visual environment over here. I'm using DWM. You know, if it ain't broke don't fix it. It's a classic window manager and has every feature I could possibly want. I have key shortcuts set up. I have a little shortcut where I can move windows by holding down the windows key and dragging windows like this if I want to. And if I do shift windows in space, they snap back into their full screen or tiling configurations. So every time I open a new window, like if I open my file manager, for example, it will go and spit out on the side over here and split my screen. If I open another window, like another terminal, it will go and spit everything to the right and open in the main window to the left, I guess, section of the screen. So all that stuff's really useful if you want to easily segment your screen, which is what I like doing. But if you need to move around a window, you could always drag it out and, and do it the normal way. I only have two extensions installed here. The first one is X Resources. That's an extension which makes it so you essentially have custom colors over here, which in my case is just the same theme for my website and everything else. As you can see, it's the same theme as my terminal. And I have a system tray. So if if I were to open a program that uses it, uh, I don't know, Gajim, the XMPP messenger, and a couple of others, it would show up in the top right corner over here as a system tray application, which some people need, so I have added it over there. Oh, and the other thing I have is DWM blocks. This is just a program which runs in the background and updates this text over here, which has time zones from all across the world, their current date and time. Yeah, I'm recording this uh, pretty late, actually, and my battery percentage, so there you go. And kids, don't stay up this late to record your videos. This is only for educational purposes. The next thing I have is my terminal. So I'm using the Suckless ST or Simple Terminal, which as the name implies is a simple terminal. You open it up, I have the keys page up, and page down, which allow me to size it up and down, which is really useful when I have to do tutorials and I want to make the text really big. I also have features like transparency, which you'll only notice if you run a compositor, which in my case would be XComp Manager, which if I run that, as you can see, it becomes transparent. But personally, I actually don't like transparency a lot, so I turn that feature off. I also have a patch which makes it any size, which means I can go through and change the size to anything I desire, not just a specific text dimension. And finally, the other patch I have installed is scrolling, so you can scroll, well, it's a little bit broken here, but like if you had it set up normally, you'd be able to scroll up and down by using your mouse wheel, which is pretty cool. Next thing is my shell. I use ZSH with syntax highlighting. So when I open up my terminal, if I type a command which doesn't exist, like, I don't know, like that over there, as you can see, it goes red because it doesn't exist. I want to echo, it'll go yellow when it's in quotation marks. Same thing if it's in single marks, like hello. Now here's a cool one my browser. I have a key set on my window manager, Windows W, which opens up Firefox. Now, as you can see, my Firefox has basically nothing. This is because I'm using a special tool called Arkinfox. So this is a custom Firefox configuration file or user.js that you can easily install that will go through and basically disable all the annoying privacy invading features of Firefox and just all the annoying Mozilla stuff in general, like Mozilla account and all the stupid stuff it makes you do. Now, I actually have a custom installation 
script which will automatically install Arc and Fox for you and a set of overrides that I have configured which remove all the stuff which I personally don't like and customize it to the standards that I like. So for example, by default, Arc and Fox comes with letterboxing, which is when the browser window is kind of sized weird to avoid fingerprinting, and I've disabled that feature, although you can re-enable it if you need the security. I also have my Firefox set to compact mode, as you can see, which is just what I like. And in my script, I have a section which automatically installs extensions that I like. So I have uBlock Origin. I still don't care about cookies, which is a really good one that blocks cookie prompts. Decentralize, which removes all those annoying CDN calls, which your browser does sometimes, and new window without toolbar. Now that last one's really useful because say I'm doing a tutorial, I can right click and click new window without toolbar, and it will give me a borderless window that I can easily use for tutorial purposes with all the same features of Firefox, but without all the interface. So this is really good for doing tutorials. Speaking of web browsers, I also have a file browser. By pressing Windows E, which is the same you know extension as what you would use on normal Windows, I have this PC Man file manager over here, which is just a pretty straightforward file manager. I've also installed FFmpeg thumbnailer, which means that it will thumbnail images and videos for me, which makes it really easy to identify images and videos. I also have a PDF viewer called Zathura PDF. I haven't really added a lot of features to this, but for example, if you open a PDF, you can do all your regular stuff. If you select text, it'll automatically copy it to your clipboard. So I've selected, I don't know, some random text over here. I can then go and copy paste it. And as you can see, it's a copy pasted it fine. The other feature I've added is a dark mode. So a control R will switch it to dark mode. And as you can see, it matches the rest of the window. So it looks really cool if, if you're into that. But I don't know, personally, I just have it normal most of the time. The image viewer I use is called NSXIV. It's a neo version of SXIV, which is the kind of like a simple suckless, I don't know what it stands for, but a simple image viewer basically. And yeah, it does literally what you'd expect it to do. It, it shows an image, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can press A to see the individual pixels, disable anti-aliasing. Uh, and I've tried to add extensions to it. I might in the future like to rotate images and stuff like that. But for now, this is perfectly fine for all my needs. It also gets its background color and text and whatnot from my X resources file. So that's why it's the same as my terminal. Next up is my video player, MPV. This one's pretty straightforward. It's got a, a really beautiful interface, I gotta say, like super simple, you know, uh, lets you scroll forward and backward. And yeah, it's a, an extremely simple video viewer. I don't really have a lot to say about it. Look at, how, look at how angry I look at this video. Next is my password management. So I use a script called pass, which is an extremely simple password manager, but I also have a D menu script for it called pass pass menu. I've actually had to write my own custom version of it that supports OTP codes. I might go over that in a future video because it's really minimal and cool, but I have it set to Windows and O, but essentially I can scroll through the accounts. I can press enter and it will then prompt me for my master password and then I can copy paste. It'll automatically copy my password to the clipboard, which is really cool. Next up, we have my media editing, recording, whatever setup. The video editor I use, as always, is DaVinci Resolve. There's nothing really special to say here. It's proprietary, and I wish I could use something like Kadenlive. I've had a couple of videos produced with that, but for a lot of the stuff I do, I need a lot of fancy effects and higher resolutions and hardware acceleration, which isn't super possible right now on Kadenlive. So yeah, DaVinci Resolve, it sadly has to be. For image editing, I just use GIMP. It's an extremely simple image editor. They recently updated it to 3.0, which is kind of messing with me because I've been using 2.0 since I was like a little kid, so all the updates are kind of funky. It's like, it's just a simple image editor. You know, you can draw, you can do all the stuff you need to do on it. It's it's not really that complicated if you've used like Photoshop before or something like that. It's it's pretty straightforward and very very common as well. As for any vector editing I have to do, I just use Inkscape, which is a free and open source vector editor. So this is extremely simple. You know, you can make your shapes, you can you can resize them, color them with different fills, all that kind of stuff. I'd say it's pretty straightforward. My digital audio workstation or DAW that I use is called Ardor. Now I've wanted to do a tutorial on Ardor for ages because it's such an interesting piece of software. I've seen a couple of good tutorials, but I've always wanted to do one myself. It's been updated recently and recently it's been getting a lot more stable. It lets you record tracks, both that are MIDI and audio tracks, and it's just extremely useful. I highly recommend it to anybody who's into audio production. For faster audio recordings that I don't need to do 
a lot of fancy editing on. I just use Audacity. You know, the classic thing that everybody uses. You click record and guess what? It records. It's, it's really not that fancy. And yeah, it's just what I've always used. And finally, for screen capture, I either use OBS. I don't use it as often now, but it's pretty easy to use. You launch it and it goes through and it records your screen. Or I capture using a simple FFmpeg script like the one I'm running right now. This command right now is what's capturing the audio and the video that you're seeing right now. So I'm currently recording both my audio and my video into a file and then I'm going to take that file and edit it for the purposes of this video. Thank you so much for watching my video. Everything I mentioned today is available in my DOTS repository, which I'm going to link in the description, including all the configurations for the different programs I use. I also have a scripts repository, which has both my famous CVRT program, which you guys might know, and pass menu, which is a custom version of pass menu, uh, which is shipped with the pass password manager, which supports OTP codes. I also have my builds of DWM and ST and DWM blocks available on my GitHub, which I'll link in the description, uh, which don't add a lot, but they add a, a, a couple of basic features which are useful to the window manager I use. And with that, that's pretty much it. I've been Denchi. This has been my 2025 Linux setup video. Goodbye.